Fish. We are looking right now at the notes for today, properties of rational exponents. Okay, we're going to talk about some of these. And I just want, I'm just trying to get through all the different kinds of properties there are. And then we are going to do some of your homework for tonight um, so that you don't have, you know, 30 questions. You have to do the evens for tonight, but that is still a lot. Can we stop talking, please, while I'm talking? Shh. Okay, so we're right here in the notes. We're looking at the goals and vocab. It's telling us right here that if we have two of the same base, A is my base, okay, and we're taking it to the M and Nth, we just add them together. So here's my example. If I have 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 3 halves, it's 1 half plus 3 halves. So I have 3, end up having 3 squared, which just evaluates to 9, okay? So all I'm doing is taking these two things and adding them together. If I have two exponents where I have the same base, I just add the exponents together, okay? If I have an exponent and then parentheses with that exponent on the outside, I'm multiplying them together. My example is 5 and 3 halves times 2 is 5 to the 3, which is 125. So I just multiplied those together. If I have two bases where I'm taking it to a power, would you open the door for Finn, please? If I have two bases where I'm taking it to a power, each of those bases is being taken to that power, okay? So if I have 4 times 9 to the 1 half, it's 4 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half, okay? Shh. I'm teaching up here, please, and recording this. Okay, so that gives me 2 times 3, which ends up giving me 6, okay? Now if I have a to the negative n, this is kind of what I talked about before, I end up getting 1 over a to the nth, a can't be 0, but so 36 to the negative 1 half, we kind of had one of these problems um, on the homework last night, we get 1 over 36 to the 1 half, which gives me 1 sixth, okay, so 36 ends up being 1 sixth, shh, focus please, okay, a over a to the m, a to the n equals m minus n, Okay, so that's 6 to the 5 halves over 6 to the 1 half, we subtract them. 5 halves minus 1 half ends up being 2, gives me 36. Okay, if we have a fraction taken to a power, okay, we end up having the top one to that, to that exponent and the bottom one to that exponent. Okay, so it's 8 and 1 third over 27. It becomes 8 to the 1 third, 27 to the 1 third, end up with 2 thirds. Okay, so we're just going to practice some of these. So we've got x times x to the 1 half. You guys remember that x, this is x to the 1 times x to the 1 half, correct? So don't tell me later that you don't understand this if we're talking while I'm talking right now. Whispering is a form of talking. Shh. Okay. So just like up here where we have these two are the same, so we added them together, we do that the same here. x to the 1 plus 1 half. Okay? You get x to the 1 and a half or x 1.5, you could say. Okay? y to the negative 2 thirds. That means this is 1 over y to the 2 thirds. If it's negative, we end up putting it on the bottom becomes a fraction, okay? For C, we've got 4 to the 2 thirds to the 6th. So we're multiplying these. 4 to the, what? Yeah, this is 2 over 3. I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we get 4 to the 2 thirds times 6. This becomes 4, 6 times 2 is 12 over 3. 12 divided by 3 ends up being 4. So 4 to the 4th, which if we put it in our calculator is 256. No, this is 2 over 3. Okay. All right. For D, we have y to the 2 thirds over y to the 1 third. This becomes subtraction. We have y to the 2 thirds 
minus one third, two minus one is one. So we end up y to the one third is our answer. When we have that letter there, we can't solve it all the way, right? We don't know what it is, that variable. Okay, we have one over 64 to the negative one third. If it's a negative, we have to flip it. So instead of one over 64 to the one third, it becomes 64 to the one third. Then that problem we can solve. So we're gonna put it in our calculator. I literally put 64, if you guys can't see this. I put that little carrot button, the one that like looks like a little arrow pointing up. And then I put one divided by three. And I'm gonna get four. You could also take the third root of 64. Okay, if I have z to the one-third, yes? How did I get four? I put 64 to the one-third in my calculator and that gave me four. Okay, it means the cube root of 64. This means the same thing as that. Okay, so what times what times what gives me 64? Four. Four times four gives me 16. 16 times four gives me 36. It's 64, excuse me. Shh. Okay, z to the one-third times z to the one-half is the same thing as z to the one-third plus one-half. Uh-oh, we're going to have to add fractions. So, we're going to change both of them to have a six on the bottom. Shh. Three times what gives me six? Two. two. So two times one is two. Two times what gives me six? Three. So that's three. So two plus three is? Five, right. So we get five, six is my answer. So if your fractions, if the bottoms don't match, you have to make a match and then add them together. Okay, let's turn this over. Okay. Shh. We're going to use stop talking, please. We're going to use properties of radicals to simplify this, okay? All we're going to do, I know that it has that radical sign on the outside. We're just going to multiply the inside and put the radical sign over it. What's 2 times 8? 16. And yes, the square root of 16 is 4. I just don't want you to skip that step because I want you to know what happened, okay? All right. All right, now we're going to get a little bit more difficult. I'll wait. You're just going to waste your time at the end where you can have more time to do your homework. Or talk without me yelling at you. But if you want to waste that time by having a conversation right now, currently while I'm recording this, go ahead. Okay, this is where it gets a little complicated. We've got 320 to the cube root and five to the cube root. We can think of this also as 320 to the one third over five to the one third. And then it's like the properties we did before, except my base doesn't match. So now I wanna think about, is there something five times what to what power would give me 320? Okay. Five squared gives me what guys okay what about five to the third power what does that give me what about five to the fourth power what does that give me yeah so it's it's not working here right so we want to think of two numbers that multiply to give us 320 okay so if we've got 64 times 5 this is all to the one third power. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
But if we just stick this in our calculator, we will get that. But what if we, I put variables in here? So I want you to understand how we're doing this. Okay, so that's 64 times 5. The cube root of 64 is 4. So we have 4 on the outside. We can have that cube root or to the 1 third, either one. 5 over the cube root of 5. No, not the square root, the cube root. So 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64, right? So it's like 4 times 4 times 4. So the cube root of 64 is 4, so I can pull that out. Then these two things are the same, so they cancel, right? 5 over 5 is 1. So 5 to the cube root and 5 to the cube root is still 1. So my total answer is 4 here. Okay. Now for here, we've got 16 to the cube root and 4 to the cube root. That's 16 to the 1 third times 4 to the 1 third. Okay. So... We want to change this 16 so my base is the same, so it is also 4. Thank you. Okay, so I know 4 times 4 gives me 16, right? So if I was to take, instead of the cube root of 16, if I was going to take 4 to the second power, cube rooted it, right? I would have 4 as the base, but instead of 1 third, this would be, I'm going to change this into a fraction, into an exponent. So that's 4 and 2 thirds times 4 and 1 third now. Do you guys see how my bases are now the same? Now I'm just going to add these together. 2 thirds and 1 third is 4 to the 3 thirds, which is 4 to the 1, which is 4. It's weird, right? Okay. So let's look at D. And I'll try to walk this um, through a little bit slower. Okay. So do you see how this is 32 and this is 2? I want one of the things up here to be 2. Okay. So I look under my fourth root. And I think, okay, what two things multiplied together? 2 times what gives me 32? 16. 16. Okay. So I've got 16 times 2, and I've still got this fourth root of 2 on the bottom. Okay. What is the fourth root of 16? What times what times what times what gives me 16? 2, right? 2 times 2 gives me 4, times 2 gives me 8, times 2 gives me 16. I just like, this is like what I'm thinking in my head, guys, so I'm trying to write it out to make it easier. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. So this is the same as 2, 4th root 2, over 4th root 2. Oh, look, is this, this part, the top and bottom, the same? Yes. I know that divides to be 1. So my answer ends up just being 2. Good? What's 6 times 6, guys? What's the square root of 36? 6. Done. Okay. Let's talk about for f. <laughs> yep. Okay. 250. I know this is to the third root, but I want it to be 2. So what times 2 gives me 250? So just put it in your calculator, 250 divided by 2, we get 125, right? <laughs> Okay, what is the cube root, what is the cube root of 125? What times what times what equals 125? You can put that in your calculator, put the cube root of 125. It's 5, right? So 5, the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 2, these cancel and I get 5. Questions about that? Yeah. Wait. So I looked at the bottom, I looked at the smaller number. I'm going to walk you through this one more time if we listen. Shh. If we look at the bottom, that's 2. So I go 250 divided by 2 gives me 125. Oh, that works out. 125 is a perfect cube. If I put that in my calculator, I get 5. I put this right here in my calculator, I get 5. 
so I can bring it outside of my cube root. Then I have the cube root of 2 over the two, cube root of 2. Those cancel out, and I end up with just 5. Okay. So I can do these bottom ones, or I can do some of your homework. You guys want me to do some of your homework? Homework. Okay. Okay. I think we got more than our own. Let's do a couple of the homework problems. You have the evens for homework, so let's do some of the evens to give you guys a little bit less. And there are three sections on here, so I want to do some from all three sections. Okay? So let's just start right out. I'll wait. Let's start with just doing number two. Okay, and then we'll look from this section if there's another one we want to do. Okay? All right. So we have the square root of 294, m to the fourth, n to the third. So the first thing I look is I stick in my calculator. I'm going to stick it in my calculator. Okay, uh, let's do the square root of 294. What do I get? Oh, uh, it's not a perfect square. All right, so 294. What goes into 294 that's a perfect square? Do you guys know your perfect squares? So that's like uh, four is a per one is a perfect square, four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five, six times six, seven times seven, eight times eight, <laughs> nine times nine, 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, okay, and then 13 times 13 is 169, 14 times 14, 196, 15 times 15, 225. If we stop there, we're in pretty good shape. So that's something you might want to have up there just to think about, those perfect squares. Shh. Okay. So I want to take and figure out which one of these numbers fits into, shh, is divisible by 249 evenly. Okay? So 294, what do you think is going to fit in there evenly? Any guesses? Well, I don't think 225 is going to, so let's try 196. Nope. 294, let's try 169. Shh. Nope. 294 divided by 144. Nope. 294 divided by 121. Nope. I know 100 doesn't fit in there evenly. So 294 divided by 100. No. 294 divided by 81. Why are we talking while I'm talking? You should be doing this as well. Shh. 281 doesn't go in there. What about 64? No. What about 49? Yes. 39 goes in there evenly. So, shh. 49 goes in there evenly. So, I get 49 times 6, m to the 4th, n to the 3rd. What's the square root of 49? 7. So I can take the 7 on the outside. What's m to the 4th squared? Yes. No, that's, that's squaring it. I want the square root of it. m to the 4th square root would be m squared, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4. So m squared times m squared would be m to the fourth. And n to the third, shh, stop talking. Why is your conversation more important than your education? Stop. Okay, we have n cubed, right? We can take out, that's n times n times n. That's my pair right there. I can take that out. We have one pair. We're left over with 6 to the n. That's my answer. Is there any others, 2 through 30, for the evens that you want me to do? Or should I go to the next section? 24. Okay. 
We're going to look at 24. All right. I want to know to the cube root, so I can't use those square roots that I wrote on the top. Okay? It has to be three things multiplied together that goes into it evenly. Okay? All right. So I'm going to tell you right now, we've got that negative 8 on the outside. We get, instead of 108, I'm going to say it's 27 times 4, u to the 8th, v to the 4th. 27, what times what times what equals 27? 3. So I get negative 8 times 3. I've got 8 u's. I can take out things that are threes. So I have one, two of those. So I can take out a u squared, but I have to leave the other two in there. v to the fourth, I have four of them. I can take out three. So I have one v. Left inside, I took out that 27. I still have a four. My u to the eighth, I still have u squared. v's, I took out three. I still have one more. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24 u squared v square root 4, cube root, excuse me, this is all cube root, 4 u squared v. That's my final answer right there. Okay, from the next section, 32, 34, 36, 38, or 40. Do you want me to do one of those? Okay. From writing each expression in exponential form, do you want me to do 42 through 60, any of those? It should just be like last night stuff. So if you feel confident about that, it should be good. It really, the new stuff is 2 through 30. All right, I'll give you the rest of the time to work.